Greetings, Klausowitz here. So this video is like the, uh, an additional video about the Macedonian Phalanx and about um, two topics which came every time up when it's about the Macedonian Phalanx. The first one is a question or a debate and the uh, debate question is is the are, are the pikes or were the pikes of the um, phalanx basically the ones which will be more upwards if it's a good mishap protection or not this whole discussion is actually based on a statement of a um, greek historian of his of the antiquity he lived around second century bc his name was polybios and he actually stated that it would be a good protection I have now to say against errors. This is what I read, but this is like could be a translation mistake or interpretation mistake. I don't know if he really said error in his text or if he said missile or something like that, because this would kind of change the topic here. But this is where this discussion comes from, because actually when people say it is a good protection as missile, it's just the argument is Polybius stated it. Could be that some other Greek also stated of its time, but basically this is the origin of this. So, if it, is it, is it or is it not? <laughs> the point is, we have to consider here the three types of projectiles, of missiles, for this time of the antiquity. The first one, the arrow. The second one is the javelin. And the third, the slingshot, the stone, basically, for a sling. So, and now we have to consider what effect could have, like, a wall of spears, or basically like a, a forest of spears, could actually have um, on this kind of projectiles. If you look at arrows, an arrow, when it would really fly in this angle from more above, it could actually hit or glances against some pikes, and then shift around and would hit with this uh, part behind more uh, like another pike and he would really have this dung 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 effect that actually loses the most of its speed the most of its power therefore and would not injure somebody or injure him less but we have to keep in mind that actually most of the time projectiles wouldn't be applied on mass in a big angle it was more like in a direct approach and even not so big angle often so this is where I say, if it's really in this angle where they would hold the pikes in this fashion and it would come from there, I don't see a big point because it would fly <laughs> towards them. But we have to say, they weren't unprotected, they had armor, they had a helmet, a shield here. So even if it would come through unhindered, in the most cases the armor would do its job. But it could be an additional effect, an additional defensive, that some arrows would be actually glance off and would be actually protected lesser man were injured. The same effect could apply on javelins, but a javelin is much more heavier than an arrow and longer. So even if he would like glance around and even if he would just fell down to his down on me, he could still injure me through its weight. It's just if I take a simple knife and not mean a butter knife or so, but really like a, a kitchen knife and you would drop them, they could still um, yeah, penetrate your foot or whatever, or they could still like injure you here. And now you have imagined this with um, some hundred of grams, or even like half of a kilo, or even more of a javelin. So this could be actually pretty dangerous. And even if it's just fell with a wooden uh, shaft on you, and then would like fell over, it could then injure uh, still a guy next to you. So I would say against javelins, no, most of the time not even javelins were kind of direct thrown, not like this. It's not like Olympical jav javelin thrower, so it's really, I want to hit with the most speed I can my enemy. So, and slingshots or stones for slings, slings, stones, I'm not really sure if there are two different things, but basically sling projectiles. They were very small, basically, they could be bigger, but if they would be big that it would hit a spike, but it's so heavy that it still injure you or still hit you, basically. and. They are small, they're very fast. Even with glance against one pike, it just would alter the course, the direction of the slingshot. So basically, no, it's not a good protection against slingshots, stones. So to summarize this for the question, I would say overall, it wasn't a good protection, but you know. But I can imagine that there were, and I'm certain that this happened at some point, there were situations where like the uh, enemy used just some bowmen, not really much, and um, the time they were shot actually this whole information would really prevent like 20 guys from dying or from getting injured 
in, in a certain dimension. From 200 guys, 20 guys wouldn't get injured or wouldn't die, therefore. So this is where I said it could be in some circumstances actually a nice bonus de defensive. And this is nothing bad against it. They just, they have to hold the pikes. They had to be ready, they had to carry them. So to lift them up or have them lifted and use it as additional protection is fine. But actually it's nothing where you can say, oh, we don't have to consider enemy skirmishers or enemy bowmen and everything. Our pikes will protect us. This won't help much because if they are unhindered, the skirmishers, they would come very close to you and just shoot you in the face out of five meters or so. You need their own skirmishers or light infantry, which is pretty fast, or even cavalry, which is even faster. These are skirmisher counter um, of a, these are anti-skirmisher methods. So basically, it's not an overall good protection against missiles. So the second topic is the phalanx, the Macedonian phalanx versus the Roman legion. Often referred to the famous battle of Pydna, where actually the Macedonian kingdom lost against Rome many years after Alexander the Great and everything. And Rome then had the hegemony over Greece. So what actually happened? Many people claim different things, like oh they won because of the gladius, because of the pilum, because of the shield, this is what this caused the victory everything, but uh, just don't consider this. Um, the thing is, what really helped, to, helped them to win was actually this both centers of the armies, so Roman legionaries, I just recall the legionaries here, and the phalangites of the Macedonian phalanx really fought against each other in both in their matter they know and the rest of the army would do their own stuff like the cavalry of both sides would do their stuff and actually the Thracian, 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 um, mercenaries, auxiliary would fight against each other and everything but the thing is actually the Roman army or the Roman legionaries were pushed back they couldn't advance, they didn't die. This wasn't, this isn't what the phalanx is for. This is what I explained in my first video. But they hold them off, they bind them, bound them, and they push them away. This was what they had to do. They had to, you know, for not, to prevent dying basically, to go long, as a slowly uh, away and away. And so the phalanx pushed them away. Basically they did their job. This is what they had to do. They were very effective, more effective than the Roman Legion here. They had to bind the enemy so that the rest of the army could maneuver. They could not um, have their own movement and everything. They had to stop basically the phalanx or basically be then over or be overwhelmed from them. And of course the shield played a role in here. I actually could just take a big shield, the same thing would happen, but but then later on they would come on uneven ground. And then there were gaps because of this inside of the phalanx, or in, on the phalanx. And this was the, now the opportunity for the Roman legion to go into the gaps and to attack the phalanx from within, creating therefore more gaps, a weaker phalanx. The phalanx is all about the formation, the spear wall and function. And then they would get overwhelmed. And this is the reason, the reason why they won. If they would stay on even ground, this is actually what history blames on the commander of the Macedonians, King Philip the Third or the Fourth, but the the actual king of its time of Macedonia, he didn't realize it. He didn't knew it. He wasn't very uh, very yeah educated in military and anything. He didn't command them to hold the line or to, just to um, stay where they could fight, they just ad let them advance and everything. Of course you can blame the Phalangite officers as well, but they couldn't, I, didn't, I would say they, rec they would realize it in this moment, but already when it's too late they had to concentrate on fighting as well. Maintain the formation and pushing the enemy back, this is what they had to do. They had to push against them to bind them through. So this is basically that the phalanx did a pretty good job. It was a very effective um, heavy infantry. It did all its tasks, it was needed of them. The only disadvantage they had were they were not so flexible and adaptable to every circumstance like terrain or shifting positions, shifting battle lines and everything, shifting form formations like the Romans were. But but therefore, actually, they had a much more higher defensive rating for melee combat, basically to the long range of their melee weapons, their pikes. We see that the Romans had problems, they couldn't overcome 
with uh, on their own defender guides. Sure, they could bind them, and then light infantry or cavalry would do the job. This was a normal tactic, but the defender guides had their own troops preventing this. So basically, and actually, the tradition on the sides of the defender guides actually uh, would overcome um, the tradition of the Romans. So the Romans would have lost if the defender guides just would hold their position. Of course, inside of a war, the uh, legion was just more flexible, deployable. They could also, we had this manipulative formation, they could be easily interchanged segments to form the battle line, even to uh, move around and everything. It was much easier to change direction. This is what I mean with the flexibility. This is also why I say that weapons are more effective if they are were more adaptable to new situations, or even if you can create new behavior or tactics, new fighting styles, if it's necessary, if it's needed. And this the Roman Legion could do that. The Fanning guys couldn't so much. And this is the reason why in this circumstance actually the Romans won. But if the Fanning guys, this is what Alexander the Great actually did, he fought every time in proper terrain and then he won. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like if you did and subscribe to my channel if you not already did. And yeah, in the next video I will talk about the shield bearers, which were actually pretty connected to the phalangites. And I will not do it right afterwards, this video. It will, first I will make a video about bows in the age of firearms and everything. Just something I have want to uh, really want to make. And afterwards it, I will continue with this and it's about the shield bearers then. So hopefully see you soon.